Hello everyone, hey, good evening, and welcome to another episode of The Front. My name is Mike Phillips, and I will be your host. It's Wednesday night, which means it's time for another live leadership lesson from The Front. As a reminder, you know, The Front is all about being in front, getting out front, continuing to teach and train yourself to bring not just yourself, but your team out front as well. So today I'm going to be interviewing an absolutely awesome guest. Couple quick reminders, you can always check out leadtheteam.net for free sales training, for motivational content, and to make sure and level up your leadership. So I am gonna be interviewing my friend here. He does financial services. He's an entrepreneur, he's a public speaker. He's, he's just absolutely phenomenal. My friend Edward Karam, right after this. If I can find my switch here. Here we go, right after this. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to Lead the Teams, The Front. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification so that you're the first to know about new episodes, uploads, and when I go live. All right, yes, we are live, and right here to my left is Mr. Edward Karam. Edward, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing fantastic, Mike. How are you doing? I am doing great. I'm doing better now that you're here, man. Thank you so much for, <laughs> for taking the time to, uh, to join me here today. I appreciate it. And uh, other than me losing my buttons, normally I've got those pulled forward a little bit. So it's really smooth transitions. I had to look at and search and find. So, hey, do me a favor. You are the, the CEO of Sell You. I know you and I were talking just a moment ago. That's, that's a real primary focus for you. But you're a, a man of many hats. You're in financial services. You've got uh, a really, to me, exciting and colorful background. If you would, share with, with our, uh, our viewers here just a little bit about yourself, kind of what's your background in business. Who is Edward Karam? Well, uh, first of all, Mike, I really appreciate you uh, having me as a guest on your show. I'm, uh, you know, I never take these things for granted. So thanks again. Absolutely. Um, so I was, uh, I was born and raised in, uh, in Israel. I, uh, you know, grew up there, um, didn't move to the United States till I was uh, just a little bit over uh, 20 years old uh, back in the mid 90s. Um, my, uh, my, my background has really been in the, uh, in the uh, restaurant business. I've uh, worked as a restaurant manager, you know, before that as a bartender, things like that. But I've always, uh, as a kid, I always wanted to be a businessman. I've always been an entrepreneur. I was, uh, I remember the first uh, venture as a businessman was selling uh, soda on the beach uh, in the summer, uh, you know, just out of this uh, styrofoam cooler. So it's always been one of those things that I've been uh, fascinated with was uh, doing business. So when I moved to the United States, um, it, you know, there was a language barrier. So it took me a while to, uh, to practice and, and, and get my English perfected. And uh, I figured that the best way to do that is to interact with as many people as I could. So I wanted to jump back in into the restaurants as a waiter because I figured that's how I would uh, I, I would get to practice and talk to a lot more people. Okay. Um, I didn't you know I didn't last in the uh, restaurant business too uh, too long. I as a as an employee I, I started a couple of restaurants and then I moved to Las Vegas and uh, jumped into the uh, casino industry. Wanted to get that on my resume. Uh, it's funny that I say resume. I've never actually had a resume. I've always been kind of, you know, either, uh, uh, you know, stolen from one business to another or hired out of one company to another, but never really actually had a resume in place. Uh, and then I moved from Vegas to uh, Texas. Uh, I started uh, a martial arts uh, franchise or I was part of a martial arts fran franchise as an instructor, moved to Texas, uh, opened the Houston market, and then the, uh, the whole 2006, 2007, um, real estate collapse happened. And uh, the first thing to go when you can't afford, you know, to pay your bills is the extracurricular activities for uh, little Johnny. So, sure. you know, the martial arts yeah. business took a dive and I decided to uh, sell the studios that I have and uh, dive into the construction business. I was single at the time and I did that for a really long time, a little bit over 10 years uh, before uh, or after a while, around 2011, I got married and then I started having children. Well, the thing is, when you're in the construction business, you're you're very 
invested, especially when you're the owner, in, in, in the time that you're in there. And I was literally working seven days a week. I was barely seeing my family. I had only two kids at the time, uh, working from about five o'clock in the morning till almost nine o'clock at night. My wife had a very strict bedtime schedule for the children. So when I would leave the house, they're still sleeping. When I'm back, they're, they're already asleep. Didn't really see them. Um, and then uh, towards uh, the beginning of 2015, I lost my father. Uh, and nine months later, my mother uh, passed away as well. And that kind of hit me really uh, hard because you start reflecting on sure. what you're doing in life sure. and you realize what's, what's important. Uh, and, and that's family and, and the time that you have. So I decided I wanted to do something different. And when I started looking into things, I realized I'm unemployable at that point. There's no way that I can go back to working for anybody. And I came across the uh, financial services sector, uh, being a salesperson offering uh, mortgage protection, retirement planning uh, type of products through life insurance. Uh, and that's really where I found, I guess, my home, my niche. I figured how I can help uh, serve others and how I can help protect people and provide for people that are unable to really uh, figure things out on their own. If I could coach them and help them become uh, more financially independent and, uh, and successful in life, earning uh, much better or much more than what they would uh, if, if they just kept doing what they were doing. And that's where, you know, I kind of landed here in the last couple of years and then started Sell You uh, last year, where we're basically offering a training and support platform for life insurance agents and financial advisors in the industry that are looking to take their income from this level to the next. So if you're, you know, doing forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year, we can definitely teach you and work with you and, and provide you with the kind of training and support you need in order to become a multiple six figure uh, earner and even potentially seven figures, uh, depending on how far you wanna take it. So e expand on that a little bit for me. Oh, I'm, I gotta make the feedback go away. Maybe I gotta sit up closer. There we go, it actually sounds better. So expand on it, you're, you're doing, you're primarily doing financial services and insurance training with Sell You. How, how do you, uh, it, 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 are you training individual agents? Because obviously, you know, it, there are certain insurance companies that have Correct. their own training platforms, so to speak. But, it, it, you know, having been in sales for a long time myself and, and you as well, often there's there's a hole, there's a lack in that area training for, for salespeople. And I have That's to right. imagine insurance is the same. So how, who are you connecting with? How are you connecting with them? Is it individual agents or brokers or, or agencies? What's, what's your, how, how do you find the people that need your training? Yeah. So, I mean, excellent question. It's, it's a loaded question. It's got a lot of moving parts here. So I'm going to try to answer, <laughs> I do that you, a lot. you know, kind of tackle it uh, one piece at a time. Okay. So you touched on something and I want to, you know, you know, make a, um, I guess, a, a, a small correction. As far as the financial uh, or the insurance companies, they're, they're, we work with great, you know, insurance companies that are all A rated in the, in the financial uh, world. But the, the, the only difference or the only uh, thing that is different from what you said is they're really good at creating products that the, 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 let's say, Americans need, but they're not good at training or selling those products. Okay, so those are things gotcha. that are very important. So there, and what they do is they work with different brokerage firms, or as we call them in the industry, IMOs, that stands for insurance marketing organizations. So they, these okay. are groups of, of companies that have contracts or licenses to sell these products for all these insurance carriers. And then you as an individual agent, if you're interested in selling for a specific company, any one of the major carriers, um, then you have to go through a broker. You can't just call them and say, hey, I'm interested in selling your products. Can I be licensed? They're gonna, tell, they're gonna refer you to one of those IMOs or brokerage firms. So when I first started in the industry, I went through one of those brokerage firms, but then I realized that they weren't really providing kind of a, a meat and potatoes training that I felt I needed in order to be successful. You see, I was very driven. Uh, I had a family to feed. And because I don't believe in just sticking my toes in the water, I literally shut my construction company down 
and dove like right in into the financial services. So I didn't feel that I had the platform to be able to get what I need in order to be successful. I wanted to jump in and earn $50,000 a month right off the bat. And that's something that you could do, but it felt like they didn't have what I needed in order to do that. So I moved on to another, you know, insurance marketing organization. I didn't see, you know, they, they, I was able to do that with them, okay. but they had oh, the training was lacking. The, the lead system was, was, um, to be desired. I mean, there's just a lot of different things that didn't, you know, make sense and then moved to an, a third one. Again, it, it got to a point where I realized if you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. So I decided to put together a training platform that really dives in into the details that are missing from the, the training for life insurance agents that allow you to become successful from the beginning instead of going out there and making all these mistakes uh, that, that are actually costing you money. Uh, you know, anywhere from basic training to advanced training. Uh, so that's kind of where the difference is because the, the, the insurance carriers, I mean, they're great. They have amazing products, but they do, you don't see them on TV or on the radio promoting. They need salespeople. They need those licensed insurance agents to sell their product. But if you are mediocre and you don't know how to come across or how to generate those leads or how to offer uh, the right product for the right client, what ends up happening is somebody else that knows better than you is going to come around and is going to replace the policy that you put in place. You know, it's just like buying auto insurance. You know, you can buy it from, let's say, uh, uh, you know, ABC insurance company and then uh, uh, DEF comes around and says, hey, I can give you the exact same coverage for $200 less a year. You know, you're going to say, okay, well, I'm saving money. What's the difference? There is no difference. Then let's do it. So if you're not providing the right kind of coverage for a certain client, somebody else is going to come around and provide them with something better. And they, you know, and now you're going to be losing that income. Sure. No, I thank you for explaining that because that's one of those things too, that you're, you're right. I'm in, in that arena. I'm naive. That's why I get to have great people like you on. And that I, I, it's no secret. My ulterior motive for this show, yeah. man, I take notes, I learn. It's fantastic. So thank you for sharing that. The, hey, before I got into this industry, the only thing about insurance I knew was how to buy car insurance. I had no clue how, that, how life insurance or any of that works. So, you know, right. it definitely was a learning experience for me too. So, so let me ask you, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of move this quite because this is a, a leadership based show, it's a, a success based show. And since you're, your industry and a lot of people that may watch this uh, are insurance or, or financial services, but how about for the, the rest of the world too? I think there's some characteristics that tie in. What are kind of the three top character, two or three top characteristics that you would say really are going to springboard somebody to see success either in, in your industry or in business in general? That's a, that, that's, a, that's a really good one. So, you know, in my opinion, I mean, in the way I've always um, done anything, whether it was, you know, in this industry, whether it was in the martial arts industry before that in the construction, I think, you know, the most important thing is you have to have a strong foundation to stand on. All right, and, and the, the analogy here of, of this foundation is you as an individual, all right? First of all, if you want to be successful in, in, in any industry, and, and let's say it's based on sales, if it's a sales uh, system, then you have to, first of all, believe in what you're selling. If, uh, I mean, you know, if you're, if you're in uh, cosmetics or, or diet programs or selling life insurance or selling anything like that, you have to believe in the product that it is a product that is needed and is necessary and you personally use it. You know, if you're selling life insurance and you don't have any life insurance in yourself, you, you're not gonna last in this industry because you're not speaking from, um, you know, a point of belief or from personal experience. Uh, but the most important part as far as the foundation is believing in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, no matter what you do, you're always gonna fail because the, the reality is being in business is extremely difficult and extremely messy. It is not an easy thing. It is not a nine to five kind of job. So anytime that you're independent, whether you are, 
you know, a 1099 or, or, or your owner of your own business, there are a lot of obstacles to hit. It is not a simple task to take on this kind of a, a mission. So you have to be driven. And that's the second thing. You have got to be driven to succeed. It's like that, uh, I guess, uh, comic that I see of, of like these two miners that are digging and one of them kind of gives up and leaves right before he hits that diamond where the other one is, is still digging. You can't give up. When you give up, that's when you failed because you know everybody knows that saying, the road to success is paved with failure. Success is part of failure. It's not the opposite of failure. It is part of it. You have to fail before you succeed or else you're not going to. Uh, and a lot of people give up and, 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 and just kind of walk away um, not wanting to uh, continue. And, and that's, that's very important. So you got to believe in yourself. You got to be driven. And then the, the third most important com component is that you've got to do the things that, that, that are tedious, the things that nobody enjoys doing, those phone calls that everybody hates calling and prospecting or hitting the pavement or, or following up, the things that nobody wants to do, you got to do that every day, day in, day out, or else it's just not going to work. Nobody cares about your business as much as you do. So you can't expect to hire somebody uh, that has an employee mentality to, uh, to, to do your job or do the things that you have to do. Um, I, I read a book uh, by uh, uh, Tim Grover, who, is, um, mm -hmm. uh, who wrote the book Relentless. It's one of my favorite books, but one of the things that, uh, that he said in there, and he, he did an interview on somebody else's show, and he said, listen, if you wanna find somebody uh, to work with that is gonna be successful, he has to be as messed up as you. And uh, the, the person interviewing him, he says, well, what do you mean? He says, well, okay, so let's say you work in a building and you have 500 employees. So those 500 employees are there at nine o'clock in the morning. At five o'clock in the afternoon, they're all there. At six o'clock, you may have another, maybe a hundred because the other 400 already went home. At 7 p.m., you're gonna have maybe another 20 or 30. But 11 o'clock at night, you're gonna have one more person other than you in that building that's the guy that's as messed up as you. That's the one you want to work with. So you want to be that relentless person in your business. You can't be successful if you're not relentless. And that's, I think that's the the, the third and most important key. I, I love it, man. I, I, love I think it. those are, I, I find myself continuing to agree with people. I, I, when I come back on screen, people got to watch me and be like, that, it's just permagrin. <laughs> so you're, you're saying that the belief system, being driven, be relentless. Those are your, yep. your three. And Absolutely. It, I think uh, Steve Jobs had a quote like that also that he said, look, if you're going into business for yourself, you got to be crazy because no sane person would ever submit themselves to, to doing the things that are necessary. And I yep. think, I, I think like you're saying, look, dialing the phone, doing, doing the little things that nobody wants to do, but knows they need to do that, that I've, I've heard that so many times. And I think it's so, so relevant that you bring that up. Yeah. Um, I'm going to shift gears just a little, just a little bit, but you have with sell you and where you're doing training for, for many people, I'm, I have to imagine hundreds, thousands of, of people and agents. And when you're you're doing that sort of thing, obviously you make a tremendous impact. You'd like to to make a tremendous impact on those people that Absolutely. are engaging with you. Let me ask you, who are some people that you could say have been mentors and been impactful on your rocky road or, or through your failures? Who are people that have had an impact on you as a as a leader or as a person, as a business person? So, I mean, again, for, you know, what, one of my uh, one of my probably favorite questions or favorite topics to talk about is who are the uh, mentors or, or, or speakers or, or uh, authors that have had a major um, effect on me or, or that I enjoy listening to or even watching. So the, the, I think the number one guy and this is the guy, the first uh, mentor, the first guy that I started listening to. And, and that was, it was amazing how, you know, sometimes you feel like you're lucky because you just happen to stumble upon a great book or a great person. And that was Jim Rohn. 
Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and I remember this was when I was very, very young. I, uh, one of my first entrepreneurial ventures was being a Herbalife distributor. This was when I was still in Israel. And uh, he came, there was a big event uh, when they opened Israel as a country for them to distribute their, uh, their products through. Uh, and, I, and I came and listened to him. And of course, I didn't speak English. So we had these headphones that there was a translator that was translating. And I remember being so captured by him that when I moved to the United States, I started buying his uh, cassette tapes. All right, back then there was cassette tapes. Um, Back in and the listening day, to him, I read his books, and then the next person that I was introduced to till the day, I think, is just an amazing, phenomenal person. Unfortunately, he's no longer uh, with us, but it was uh, Zig Ziglar. So you know, Zig. I, I mean, I just love listening to him, uh, listening to his audiobooks, reading his stuff, watching him on YouTube, things like that. And then more recent. Uh, there's a couple of uh, there's a couple of people that are uh, more kind of um, the last couple of years be, be, you know got on the uh, on the screen. Well, one of them has been around for a while, but Tony Robbins is one of them. Uh, Simon Sinek. I, I, I mean, the guy is just such an intelligent person. And then uh, Gary V. You know, he's he's just also somebody that I feel his personality is very close to mine, especially with with the way he comes across. He's very raw, very direct. And, uh, and, and you need that. I feel like uh, Americans are moving away from just the, uh, the, the, the cold reality. They feel like they need more coddling. Nobody wants to hear the truth anymore. So it's very fresh when you uh, come across somebody like Gary Vee that just kind of gives it to you straight into the point. And, and that's kind of the, the, the person that I am. I don't like to sugarcoat it. I don't like to beat around the bush. If, you, uh, if you're not good at something, you need to know that you're not good, but let's figure out how we can make this better. I, so how do you, well, when you're having that conversation with people, how are you able to effectively communicate with the people that are in your organization or the people that you're communicating with without getting a lot of hurt feelings and be able to, you know, do you have some steps that you follow? Do you have a process so that you're coaching people through that to, to, to bring out the best in them versus, yes. you know, them feeling like, boom, I got hit. Oh man, Edward just smacked me down. No, I'm going to go in the corner and cry. And, <laughs> oh, hey, we need puppies, right? Or whatever yeah. the deal is. How, how do you handle that? So, so it's all about setting the right expectations up front. Let's just, you know, put it this way. So when people, you know, become members or subscribe for, to our program, I, I kind of, explain to them what's going to take place up front. We, sure. I first of all, look into what have they done so far? What is working for them? What have they accomplished from an income perspective? And then where do they want to go? So what, why do you need me for? So let's say, Mike, you're one of the people that wants to become a member. Or you would like me to mentor you. So the first question is, what are you doing right now to attain the income or the results that you're getting right now? Let's find that out. Now, where do you want to go from here? And the next question after that is, why aren't you able to do that yourself? What's preventing you from getting there? So you could say to me that, listen, I just don't feel like I have the right kind of training, or I don't have the right lead system, or I don't have these. Okay, so now I know what, in your mind, what you need, and now let's find out what you're actually doing. So let's start with figuring out your phone script. You're not scheduling as many appointments. So let's start with your script. Let's hear it. So the person gets on the phone, I say, okay, well, your, your script sucks, all right? Obviously, because you're only getting- At least you sugarcoat it for it. <laughs> no, absolutely, and that's the thing that I tell them. I say, listen, it's very important that you don't get your feelings hurt because here's the bottom line. I am not, I'm here to make sure you're successful and I wanna turn you around to becoming a very, you know, highly lucrative uh, uh, businessman that makes three, four, five hundred thousand dollars a year in income. Because if I'm able to do that, then you become an advertisement for me and for my platform. Other than joining the membership, it's a one-time fee that you would pay to become a member in our platform. It's not an ongoing thing. I'm not continuing to make money off of your success or anything like that. So my um, motivation is in your success. And if you want this, then this is how it has to be. You need to, you know, you need to be coachable, teachable, be willing to listen and take advice. And if you are 
feeling like, listen, this is, you know, I, the way I'm doing it works, then, you know, it's what Einstein said. If you keep doing what you're doing, expecting different results, that's just insanity. I want you to become more successful. And if you are willing to listen and understand that, hey, I've done this before. So the best way, this is, a, this is an old saying, and I think it really um, probably expresses what I do the best. And it's an old saying, and it comes from Israel. So it's, you know, it's a little bit violent, but it, it definitely hits the point. It says, sure. it goes sure. like this, the safest way or the safest path through a minefield is walking behind the person in front of you. All right. So does that make sense? I mean, you want to get through, walk behind somebody else. Because if they step on a landmine, you don't have to worry about stepping on the same one again. So if I've been there before and I've became a seven-figure producer or a six-figure producer, then wouldn't you want to listen to me? You know, if I want marriage advice, should I take it from somebody who's been divorced five times or somebody who's been married for 50 years, <laughs> right? Well, so what, ha what happens when the person in front of you hits the landmine, then you're like, hey, next guy, come on through, man. Yeah, Give it a run. If I'm not... If I'm if I'm still halfway through the, the the minefield, then maybe you should let somebody else get through. You know, don't be let in someone else navigate it. Run through, yeah. That's that's the thing. You know, about becoming a good leader, you got to be a good follower first. You can't, you hmm. know, you, an old saying I, I I heard before many many years ago, and it said if you're if you're leading and nobody is following, then you're just out for a walk. So before, before you're, you know, leading anyone, you make sure that you, you know, follow somebody else, become successful, earn those chops first, and then people will follow you because they'll respect the fact that you've done it and you, and you know how to show them how to do it too. So, so that brings us to a good question. Since you are, you're, you're on the forefront of, of sell you, you said, Hey, I've got this set of mentors. I have these people I've learned from. You have to stay out front and you've got to be innovative. Your program has to be innovative to keep pulling other people out front so that they don't hit landmines. So how, how do you continue? What are some methods that you're doing right now to continue to grow? Do you have uh, recommendations of, hey, look, here's this program. For, I'm talking from a, a higher end, like an executive or a leadership perspective. Yeah. What, uh, you know, people that are really wanting to stay out front because they've, they've got their, their followers, they've got their staff or their employees, and they're saying, hey, I want to bring them along. But you and I both agree, you got to stay out front. So what are you doing to stay out front right now? So one of the things that we're, you know, we're constantly staying up front and um, being constant innovators is we, you have to make sure that you're changing with time. All right. That's one of the problems. One of the major problems in this industry that I'm in is that people kind of, you know, they, they, they do something for a certain period of time and then that's it. They're stuck in it. They don't want to change. And then all of a sudden they start to die down. Why? Because we're in a technological era where, Things are constantly changing. I mean, you know, Facebook, take Facebook, for example, Facebook advertising. I mean, they change their algorithm and, 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 and change things around on the advertising front twice or three times a year. And if you're not keeping up, then all of a sudden your ads are not generating what they need to. So it's very important to stay up, uh, you know, on things. What we're doing is we're kind of taking agents that are stuck in doing this whole kneecap to kneecap meeting people in person uh, to doing what you and I are doing right now. We're speaking over the internet. What's the difference between you and I meeting in person than you and I meeting right now where you're in, you know, Colorado, I'm in Georgia, we're having this conversation where I'm able to, you're able to see me, I'm able to see you. So that's one of the things that we're doing right now is training and teaching agents how to be able to conduct business um, statewide as opposed to just locally or even in multiple states if they're licensed in more than one. So they can increase their revenue to a lot more than just this. So I'm able to do the exact same thing. Instead of just coaching and teaching, I'm able to do the exact same thing. I'm able to meet with clients. I'm able to close high-end cases because I'm able to target more of a high net worth type of client as opposed to uh, um, the average uh, middle income American. That's great. I think it's fantastic to stay innovative like that too. So what, what would you say from a leadership perspective, what are some of the biggest challenges in mass uh, that you think, you know, business leaders, uh, you know, leaders like yourself, what are some of the biggest challenges 
that someone in leadership is facing right now today? Other than saying, hey, I'm stuck in my old ways. What are, what are some other uh, kind of mechanical things that you could, or tangible things that it's like, hey, this is some, a, a problem that I could see. Do you, do you see a couple or three things there on the forefront? From, from uh, you know, th there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of moving parts, you know, because it's not any time that you're dealing with, with people, you're not, it's not like an online business where you're selling a certain product where you don't really need to have a conversation with someone. They can just log sure. in a website, click sure. on whatever they want, put the credit card, and then somebody somewhere ships them uh, a product, okay? Any time that you have to deal with individuals where everybody has a different personality, you have to have systems in place. Now, it's very difficult to find one system or one platform that has all these systems in it. You have to be able to have several different networks and be able to tie them and, and let them communicate with each other so that you have a smooth or, or an automated uh, platform that nothing falls in between you know, the cracks. And that's, that's probably one of the main obstacles uh, in today's business is being able to have all these platforms or find the right ones that can communicate with each other so that you as an entrepreneur or you as a CEO can control all these moving parts because, you know, it, you can't, I don't think we're, we're there yet where you can do everything yourself or, or with technology without having other, um, people on your team. You know, I like what Ronald Reagan said where, you know, he said, if you want, you, you have to hire the right people if you don't want to have any screw ups. And the person that was interviewing, I think it was Johnny Carson. He said, um, so what, what do you do when they screw up? He said, you didn't hear me. You hire the right people. If you hire the right people, then you don't have to worry about them, you know, making any mistakes, but it, it's important. And that's something that I've you know, I, I, I'm not ashamed to say I have failed several times over hiring the wrong people because, you know, they come across in an interview. It's very difficult to judge someone based on an interview. And it's one of those things where you have to work with them to figure out that, oh, my God, they have no clue what they're talking about. They don't know what they're doing or personalities completely clash. Sorry, this is not going to work. But what, what is important is having those systems and finding the right platforms that can help keep your business up to task and uh you know in, in 21st century because it, you know we're here it's not one of those things where it's like i, I love it when people are like man i think we're going to start out you know using facebook for marketing it's like are you kidding me like it's been here you know it, it's not it's not like now it didn't just get here it's been here and if you're not you need to jump on board because you're, you're you know you're going to be dying a very slow death Hey, man, there are people that are just now saying that. They're like, hey, we should look into this social media marketing thing. It might be something. Hey, Maybe so we should reallocate our Yellow Pages ad and start doing, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yellow Pages still pulls for us, right? It, it works for, yeah. for a boost, right? Uh, hey, uh, let me ask you, because you, you commented this in, in kind of your last response about the wrong people. Because sometimes you have the wrong people. Sometimes you have the wrong people in the wrong seats. Right. Correct. Can you ever make the, the do, do you believe you can turn the wrong person or the wrong people into somebody that that fits somebody that is right for for a business? Yeah, absolutely. And I've, and I've encountered that I've had someone, you know, because we have one of the uh, one of the platforms that we have here that we provide leads with is a call center. So we have a call center that we operate that we generate leads for our, for our agents. And I had a lady very, you know, just an amazing lady that uh, came in, applied for the, uh, for the job and, um, and, and it just didn't work for her. She was an amazing person, had a great personality, but just couldn't get the results that she wanted because it was, you know, her pay was based on performance and, and how many leads she would generate. And she came and told me, she said, listen, you know, I just wanted to tell you that, um, this is what I used to do, you know, years ago. And, and is there is there room for me? Is there something that I can do? Now, at the time, I didn't even think about it. And it wasn't really an opportunity. But she actually opened my mind to something that we could utilize her. And we created a position for her and did that. But to, to answer your question more directly, yeah, it, it depends on the individual. If the individual is willing to, uh, you know, kind of change, because there's always, always ego in play. 
You know what I mean? Somebody says, well, you, you know, I was hired for this job. And, and if you don't think I'm good, then I'm, I'm you know, I'm going to go somewhere else. But listen, I think that you could be great doing this. You know what I mean? You're not a people person. You know what I mean? You, you're, you, you take things personal. You respond, to, you know, very aggressively. What if we did this and we put you in this position where you're able to, you know, still earn a great living, even do maybe better, but you don't have to deal with customer service. Sure. So sure. if they're willing to try, then obviously you can, you can definitely help them out. But if they're not, you know, it's a, it's one of those things where it's a lot easier pushing someone across the finish line than trying to pull them. You know, if they're not cooperating, it's very difficult. I would rather just let go and Hey, you could stay there. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going. Yeah. No, that's a great answer. I over here on the side too. And it, this goes back to something you said at the very beginning, Edward, Deborah Matthew says, Hey, if they're teachable, you know, a lot of times if somebody's willing to be teachable, I, I think that's a, that's another method also. And I know you, you alluded to that here as well. So kind of yeah. come into the, come into the tail end here. Let me ask you for, if there was one piece of advice that you would give somebody that's moving into a leadership role, not necessarily a management title, but moving into a leadership role in business, what would that one piece of advice be Edward? I would say surround yourself with people that are smarter than you. Okay. Anytime that you, uh, anytime that you put yourself in a leadership role and people are following you, you have to make sure that there are people that you take advice from that are smarter than you. If you feel like you're the smartest person in the room, then it's just not going to happen. You're going to, you're going to crash quick. Uh, I would say find mentors that, uh, and it doesn't have to be one mentor that's going to mentor you in everything. Find mentors in different, you know, aspects, like somebody that maybe uh, has done this man, this much in sales, but then there's this person that knows how to manage people in an office environment that they, that has hundreds of people and, and, and knows how to do it. So surround yourself with the right kind of people that you can feel like your their advice uh, is of, of great value to you. Uh, and those are the person, the people you should uh, you should be talking to. The best thing to, that I always think of, as far as how to elevate yourself, is uh, you know you take the five people that you have immediate um, communications with on a daily basis, the people that you talk to the most, the people that are constantly around you. Mm -hmm. If you take those five people and you combine their income, then you are the average of those five. So if you want to reach higher level. You need to surround yourself with people that are that are smarter than you, that are more successful than you, so that they can pull you up with them. That is a fantastic answer, Edward. Thank you so much for for sharing that, and thank you for spending your time with me and uh, with the audience here. We had a, a whole bunch of people go through uh, too too many to even name. I don't want to name one or two because I don't want to miss <laughs> anybody. You know what I mean? Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you for for taking the time and sharing your your insight on live leadership lessons on my show, The Front, here tonight. You have any final thoughts to take us out? or And, and how can people get in touch with you? If they're interested in Sell You, what, what's, the, uh, what's the best if you're interested in uh, If you're interested in, in getting in touch with me, I mean, there's a couple of options. You can, uh, you can go to my website, it's edwardkaram.com, or our uh, company website, which is sellyouacademy.com. So either way, you can go on either one of those websites. There's a contact form. You could send us, uh, send me an email, send me a message, uh, or on my Facebook, I've got a public uh, um, profile. Uh, you can reach me through there. Either one of those ways is, is, is definitely uh, a good way to reach me, and I usually respond within less than 24 hours. That doesn't surprise me. I'm sure you do, man. Thank you again for spending the time with me here tonight on, on Live Leadership Lessons from the Front. I'm going to go ahead and take us out, man. You got it, Mike. Thank you again. I appreciate being on your show. Absolutely. Hey, for everybody else who took the time to join Edward Karam and I on live leadership lessons from the front, thank you so much. Do me a favor. I always forget this at the beginning. I don't know why I forget it at the beginning, but hit the share button. I know we've had lots of people watching. I know that uh, we've had lots of likes and loves. And now at this point, you've gotten to see all the information, all the insight, all the wisdom that Edward has brought to us this evening. So if you've gained something from it, please do me a favor, you know, share that in the comments, 
hit the share button. If you're on YouTube, share that in the comments, share some insight that you received this evening. That would be absolutely fantastic. Please do me a favor, check out leadtheteam.tv. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification so you get notified when I go live on shows like this on Wednesday nights and on Sundays. I would love for you to participate and join us. And if you have ideas for a future show, a future live leadership lesson, if you have something that you say, man, I've got a great answer to that question that was asked and you wanna participate in that conversation, we'd love to have you do that. I know, I'm sure Edward will be responding to comments here uh, later this evening, I know I will. You know, post those questions, post those comments and we'd love to interact with you. And I will tell you what, for everybody who joined us, whether you're joining live or if you're like the 80% that are gonna join us later, Thank you so much. And until we speak next, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. We'll talk to you soon, everybody.